Ladies and gentlemen, the stock market has been ripping pretty much the whole entire day, hitting a low on the S&P of $417.60 per share, now currently sitting at $427.25 per share. Now, the stock market is being held up simply due to four companies. This is the most alarming thing because if you look at something like AMC. Well, AMC is down 1.89% today. Some other stocks are down as well. But what is really pushing the markets up is Apple. They're up 4.5% and they report earnings after the bell today. Amazon up almost 5%. They also report earnings after the bell. PayPal reported earnings yesterday up 12%. Facebook as well up 18%. So it's really the large players here that are controlling the markets and we could be in for some more panic here in the short term. It all comes down to Apple and Amazon earnings and these are really the two companies that I think are going to be most hit by inflationary costs that will not put up good numbers, right? A lot of the stocks, all of basically the large tech stocks that we have seen reporting so far, they've all been in the tech sector, but more specifically in the cloud and internet sector, like your Microsofts, like your Google, like your Facebook. They have not really seen commodity price inflation in the way that Apple or Amazon will. And they are also companies that are more revolved around advertising, right? Facebook, Google, that's all advertising. Microsoft is more uh, products, right? Like Azure, products that companies cannot operate without. Now, in my personal opinion, I am bearish on Apple and Amazon because I think, quite frankly, they had all of their demand pushed up very, very fast. I think over the past two years with all of the funny money out there, you've seen a lot of people go out and already buy those iPhones, those AirPods, that MacBook, right? People have went out and got those things already. So Apple is trading at a very rich multiple. It's over double the multiple still of Facebook and Facebook has gotten absolutely destroyed. Apple has really held up the whole entire markets. But if you do look specifically at Apple's revenue, Apple was a stagnant company from 2018, 2019, and 2020. They really didn't grow top line or bottom line revenue numbers uh, that much. So what has essentially happened is 2021 was a great year. People went out and they bought all of these Apple products. Apple had record profits, record revenue. Well, those you know, uh, uh, people, they're not going to go out and buy those same products again. People are actually cutting back right now. A lot of people think there is a recession coming and we did get the GDP data that came out this morning that does suggest a recession is coming. But specifically what has happened with Apple is you had a great 2021 and there has not been a reason to really sell off the stock any substantial way until really i think now until potentially here in 2022 because after all earnings have just impressed over and over and over again their last earnings were ridiculous 124 billion dollars of revenue they made 34 and a half billion dollars of earnings that is absolutely crazy now it's going to be very important what what is reported today the estimates last quarter that analysts had for apple coming on this quarter so not the estimates for the quarter that already reported but after that report came out the estimates for this corner that quarter that analysts had was 90 billion well they've upped that to 94 billion and that would be its second best quarter we have ever seen in apple's history uh as far as I can tell, they've never had a quarter really over that high $80 billion revenue mark besides Q1 2021. And then these other two quarters, Q2, Q3, were in the 80 billions. And then that Q4 with the holiday uh, shopping season was just absolutely ridiculous. So there has not been a substantial upset to Apple stock, to Apple's earnings to really make people, you know, sit there and question like, should we be valuing this company, uh, you know, double what we value Apple or uh, Facebook at? So this could be its make it or break it moment. And it's going to be very big for the stock market. If Apple reports well, the stock market is going to rally. If Apple tanks, if Amazon tanks, the markets are going to tank in a very, very substantial way. And I don't care which way it does go. I do have puts on Apple and I do have some S&P 500 puts, but it could still go either way. And I don't want to be naive to that fact, but the 
the the fact that we are up four and a half percent five percent on amazon these other stocks are taking massive rallies there's not really a lot of room from here in my personal opinion to go up higher than that you're kind of already pricing in a positive reaction from earnings so it makes a potential downside move that much bigger if that does ultimately happen if you've been in the markets for a while then you know exactly what i am talking about when stocks rally into their earnings one little small thing can upset and you can see these stocks drop dramatically but what happened with the GDP today? And next week is going to be another main catalyst. So I do want to talk about that as well. But it says US GDP fell at a 1.4% pace to start the year as pandemic recovery takes a hit. It says gross domestic product in the US declined at a 1.4% pace in the first quarter, below analysts' expectations of a 1% gain so they were expecting a one percent gain we declined at 1.4 percent that is telling you that we are heading closer to a recession and these recession uh, odds are definitely you know going up right a recession is two declining quarters of gdp growth if we head into you know q2 q3 and growth is really slowing down you could see a recession by the end of this year if not almost with certainty in 2023 so uh, very, very important. It says declines in fixed investment, defense spending, and record trade imbalance weighed on growth. Consumer expenditures rose 2.7%, but that came amid a 7.8% increase in prices. This is noise, not signal. The economy is not falling into recession, wrote Ian Shefferson, chief, chief economist at Pantheon Macroeconomics. But I mean, what do they know? It's, it's like simple econ 101 that people have not thought about it. they haven't caught on to it and these guys go to college for this kind of thing when you see an expansion to the economy when you grow five percent gdp or uh, i believe it's close to six or seven percent in the past two years well you should expect to see at least a small recession money gets spent it gets tucked away it's not circulating in the economy and you can see the savings rates are at pretty much all-time low levels people don't have that much money so where's the actual growth going to come from so that was not good at all not 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 good there's there's no other way to say that but why is the markets up well facebook had I, bad earnings but they were already beaten into the ground so it was like good earnings right does that make sense it was already priced for a really bad earnings report it came out it wasn't as bad so people were kind of okay with it now the big catalyst that really is going to stir the markets up is next week and that is in five days 23 hours and 48 minutes away coming may 4th at 2 p.m you do have the fed minutes that comes out and you do have the fed report as well where we are going to get that 50 basis point rate hike or we are going to get a 25 basis point rate hike if we get a 75 basis point rate hike the markets are absolutely going to freak out even if we get a 50 basis point rate hike we've seen what happened to the markets when people just mention 50 base points when fed daly came out and said hey you know we should probably do a 50 base point rate hike the market sold off two percent that day we were positive when she was speaking so i don't know if it's fully priced in i know there's going to be a lot of instability here around the fed and that is next week apple and amazon that's going to be the key that's going to set the trajectory going ahead into the future for this fed meeting if we run up into the fed meeting it could make that move down after the fed meeting more severe if we sell off into the fed meeting that could be a buy the dip bounce opportunity like we seen back here on the s p 500 that's where we got this last major rally uh it was after the fed raised a quarter point that was on march uh 14th and then we just straight ripped after that right so if if we rip again into the fed then we're likely to come back down if we do fall into the fed then we're likely to get that buy the dip kind of opportunity and to see a nice little rally nonetheless it's been a very strong day now let's talk about uh amc but i do want to go over the option flow sentiment for apple because it is not very good lots of puts that are coming through on this option chain if you guys are playing apple earnings you should probably want to know this it says 319 orders totaling 936.48 million dollars positive order value of 38 percent so a lot of people are pretty bearish on apple i would just keep that in mind ladies and gentlemen their short interest is always very very low at 0 0.67 percent so i really don't think you could see a bit of a short squeeze if earnings are good i think a lot of the earnings move is actually happening today 
day. So uh, nothing to freak out about, but definitely keep it on your radar, especially if you are playing Apple earnings. Now let's go ahead. Let's talk AMC because what the hell is going on with AMC stock today? Well, if we look at the option activity, you can see 20% positive word of value, just tons of puts coming through. Like the put aggression here is absolutely ridiculous. Like all of these are puts and they're for very large amounts of money. You could see $362,000 right there. All of these overall, pretty much all of them over a hundred thousand dollars for these put options coming in a lot of them for May 20th around the $15 put. They obviously want to keep the stock down. Now, we are seeing 17 orders totaling $2.87 million, positive order value of 20%. Over the past week, 144 orders totaling $37.99 million, positive order value of 18%. Short interest of free float is sitting at 18.95%. That is obviously a load of bullshit. You can see the stock's down 2% today. That's a lot of shorting activity that is not being factored in only saying 2 million borrow chairs that's just simply not true the utilization is sitting at 100 the cost to borrow max is sitting at 2.73 percent and days to cover sitting at 2.48 so all in all what is happening with amc stock today well you're seeing a lot of shorting activity and a lot of people do trade amc they get in they get out they're going to be the ones that fomo in so i wouldn't talk badly about somebody that that sells or encourages someone to sell i i, I would look at it like that's more dry powder coming in once a catalyst comes out for amc we know amc has earnings here in the next couple of weeks and likely some great announcements to announce as well as really really good earnings so i think there's a lot of opportunity here to really see a major rally and after all throughout all of this downturn that we have seen in the s p 500 as of recently amc has really been cushioned from a lot of it certain days where stocks uh, we're down five to ten percent amc was down two percent right so you're kind of seeing that flip-flop where the markets are doing good and now amc is doing worse than the markets it's it's gonna act like this but i think we are truly primed to see the moas from here until the end of the year as liquidity does tighten as there is less money to service those margin calls inevitably once a catalyst comes out for amc and the stock does rally that's going to be the 10d time baby so that's going to be all for this video. Hopefully, you guys found some value out of it. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to join the trading community, link down below in the pinned comment. That is going to be all. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.